Hello everyone. In this part of the presentation, let's see in detail about the procedures for finishing the external walls. We have already seen about the initial stage of tooth preparation and three steps in the final stage of tooth preparation. Now let's see about the procedures for finishing the external walls. Finishing the external walls plays a very, very important role. Let's see what is this external wall. In this picture, you can see that this wall, which is highlighted, is formed between the prepared tooth and the unprepared tooth surface. So similar to the cava surface margin, it is the wall which is present between the inside of the cavity and the outside which is the unprepared tooth. So this wall is called as the external wall. It is present throughout the cavity preparation and this configuration is very very important for the success of the restoration. So there are three objectives in this stage of uh, in this step of the tooth preparation. One, it is to create an optimal marginal junction between the restorative material and the tooth structure. And it is also essential to offer a smooth marginal junction. And third objective is to provide the maximal strength of the tooth and the restorative material and at the knee, at near the margin that is margin that's a cavo surface margin okay when a preparation has extended to the root surface let it be whatever the type of the restorative material you are going to use let it be amalgam composite or a ceramic restoration it should have a 90 degree joint or a 90 degree junction we always study that for a composite restoration we have to place a bevel throughout all the directions all the surfaces yes that is true but not towards the gingival surface or towards the root surface so bevel is placed for a composite only where there is enamel but in the root surface there will be no enamel so bevel should not be placed even for a composite restoration in the root surface extending subgingivally bevel can be placed for the subgingival restoration in case of intracoronal cast metal restoration like a cast gold restoration in those situations we can see there are certain factors that we have to take into consideration while finishing the external walls. One, the direction of the enamel rods. I have explained about the direction of the enamel rods in the uh, third part of this presentation and let's see uh, in detail, a little detail in the next slide and also the support for the enamel rods at the dendino enamel junction and the lateral surface otherwise the unsupported enamel will break. The third, the type of the restorative material to be placed like whether the composite we can place a bevel in the enamel for a cast metal restoration bevel have to be placed throughout all the sides that is all the external walls and for an amalgam we have to place a butt joint that is a 90 degree joint in all the angles and the fourth a factor to be considered is the location of the margin whether it is in the occlusal surface or in the buccal or the lingual surface or it's the margin or it's a subgingival so where the location of the margin is and what degree of the smoothness or the roughness which we are decide to finish the external walls whether it has to be smooth for example for a cast metal restoration it has to be smooth for a composite restoration it have to be roughened so let's see about that. First, let's see about what is this direction of the enamel rods. We can see that the enamel rods are having a specific direction. If you are looking at the occlusal surface from the, uh, the pit or the fissure or from the groove, the, the, this will be widened towards the outside. But if you are looking into the, uh, towards the gingival surface, uh, gingival margin we can see that it will not be straight so once it goes towards the gingival margin we can see that it will be approaching towards the gingiva this have to be taken into consideration whenever we are doing a, a finishing of the external walls so and again about the unsupported enamel rods let's keep let's think that we have made a tooth preparation like this and we have restored and this part 
of the tooth preparation which is unsupported. Why the enamel rods over there are not supported by dentin and it is in turn it's slanting over the restorative material which is rigid. And what happens is this unsupported enamel will break off. So whenever we are finishing the external walls, if there are some unsupported enamel which is hanging around, that has to be removed. And so again, as I mentioned, this unsupported enamel rod, so that has to be considered and that we can do only if you know the direction of the enamel rod. So we have to understand about the direction of the enamel rod in each surface of the tooth so that we can do that. And again, one more, whenever we are having a tooth preparation which is having a sharp margin, always keep in mind that whenever there are a sharp line angles, there will be enamel which is which may be unsupported or this sharp line angles can act as a point of stress concentration and which can propagate a crack. So this sharp line angle should also be removed while finishing the external walls. Okay, so there are two important considerations we have to do while preparing or while finishing the external wall. One, the design of the KO surface angle and the second is the degree of smoothness or roughness of the wall. So we have already seen in this, this factor. So first let's see about the design of the KO surface angle. Okay, first the design of the KO surface angle is dependent now on the type of the restorative material we are using. For example, the dental amalgam and the dental ceramic have a poor edge strength or a low edge strength. So in this material, if these materials are placed in thin sections, it will break. So a bevel is not indicated for a material which is weak in thin section. So for amalgam and for uh, ceramic restorations, we will not place a bevel. But at the same time, for a composite restoration, in enamel we can place a bevel and for a cast metal restoration, especially a cast gold which can be burnished, we have to place bevel on all the external walls. Beveling the external wall for a cave surface, mar uh, surface margin of an cast metal restoration has so many advantages. So it provides a strong enamel margin. It can permits the uh, marginal integrity even in slightly undersized casting so that there will be no leakage and it provides a marginal metal that can be more easily burnished and adapted. A thin margin of a metal can be easily burnished, but if it is so thick, it cannot be burnished. So for a cast gold restoration, it is better to always keep a bevel. And it also assists in adaptation of the gingival margin of the casting that fail to sit by a slight amount. Even if there is a small inaccuracy in the casting, if you have placed a bevel, we can burnish and we can adapt the restoration and still it will perform as a good restoration. But for an amalgam, as I already mentioned that it has a poor edge strength, so beveling is contraindicated in the gingival wall in the gingival floor yes we can place a still a slight enamel in this extent uh, it's it's ideal to remove the unsupported enamel let's see in this picture we can see that this is the way that usually that we prepare a cavity after preparing with a 2 for 5 bar we can see that there are some unsupported enamel. What happens is, if we are doing restoration in this situation, let's see a magnified picture over here. In, let's keep that we have restored and this unsupported enamel will break off in due course of the restoration and this will create a wedge or a defect below the restoration. So what we have to do is, we have to bevel this restoration, the, the, the margin of the tooth preparation, and most obviously to around 15 to 20 degrees. And even after beveling, we will be able to get almost a bunch joint. So actually that is not a, actually a beveled 
uh, enamel pre uh, preparation for amalgam actually it is removing the unsupported enamel with a gingival marginal trimmer so if this is not done the margin may break and for a composite restoration again we have to bevel because it increases the surface area of the enamel which is available for etching and bonding which enhances the bond strength then there are if there are small defects in the tooth preparation then there is no need to extend the entire cavity we can include that defect along with a bevel then the aesthetic quality especially the transition from the restoration to the tooth it will be very impossible to detect if you are placing a bevel and the marginal seal will be enhanced because we are having more enamel available for bonding we all know that composite always bonds better to enamel and the second uh, feature that we have to take into consideration or the second part is the degree or the degree of smoothness or roughness of the external wall so now we th uh, know that there is uh, we are using uh, air rotor which is a very high speed uh, tooth preparation technique but because of that we have lost the tactile sensation there won't be much tactile sensation compared to that of using a hand instrument and there is a rapid removal of this tooth structure this can lead to the overextension of the margins it can lead to a grooved wall and it also can prepare the cavo surface angle which are um, rounded especially in the proximal margins so it is always better to use a hand instrument whenever we are expecting a smooth enamel wall hand instrument like enamel hatchet and marginal trimmers may may have to be used in order to cleave the enamel the sharp enamel margins which are staying in the in the prepared tooth surface and also to establish the enamel walls so uh, here we can see about for what are the restoration what are the type of the finish that the smoothness or the roughness of the wall is desired for inlay or onlay preparation a smooth surface is mandatory because that permits an undistorted impression and also it, it will provide a close adaptation of the casting to the enamel margin but for a composite restoration roughened preparation with a coarse diamond uh, instrument is essential because that is found to increase the surface area for bonding so if it is roughened there is more area for bonding and a better bond strength and for an amalgam tooth uh, for an amalgam tooth preparation a smooth wall is not as desirable but studies have shown that if you are providing a rougher preparation then it may improve the marginal leakage so these are all the essential points that we have to understand while finishing the external walls of the tooth preparation so we have seen about what are the factors that have to be taken into consideration and what's the main objective of doing the finishing of the external vault. So that we have come to the end of the part 10. So we will meet back in the 11th and the final part of the fundamental of tooth preparation. Stay tuned. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.